bleak and barren could describe many environments on Syria. From the Shiver Peak Mountains, daunting pinnacles of rock arranged like teeth against the skyline, to the crystal desert and its scorched, sun-bleached sand. Any creature seeking to thrive here needs to be as tough as the land they inhabit, adaptable and determined. None are quite so versatile and reliable as the humble Doliak. Doliaks can be roughly divided into two categories. The Shiver Peak Doliak, adapted to the cold, bleak northern reaches of Tyria, and the Arid Doliak, more suited to the heat of the desert. The two types appear quite different to each other. Most apparent are their adaptations to temperature. For Shiver Peak dwelling Doliaks, keeping warm is a matter of life or death. Temperatures are so low, the thick snow freezes into a solid barrier over the ground and the wind that bombards the mountainsides is relentless. Usually, creatures would use the energy in their food to generate body heat and keep warm, but for the Doliaks living here, food is just too scarce. Instead of using precious energy to generate heat, these Doliaks need to conserve warmth instead. Their survival depends on their wool. Its darker colour protects them from the high solar radiation found on these snow-covered peaks, and it also acts like a warm, fuzzy blanket, shielding them from the piercing wind. Close to their skin is a very dense, soft, downy layer that traps the air warmed by their bodies and keeps it from escaping. On the outside, the wool is much longer and coarser. The fibres contain hydrophobic oils to repel water, so the Doliak can keep warm even when wet with snow or rain. Their bulky appearance is due to another special adaptation. Shiver Peak Doliak carry large quantities of subcutaneous fat, particularly on their neck and shoulders. This store keeps them warm and acts as an emergency ration in times of extreme food shortage. Their small ears, short tails and short legs all help prevent heat loss from their bodies, decreasing the surface area from which the biting winds can strip away heat. In contrast, the coats of arid Doliak vary from sandy yellow to pale brown. Light colours reflect the harsh Elonian sunlight and help these Doliaks keep cooler during the day. Their wool is much shorter than their cold climate cousins, except on their tails where it is much longer. This helps the arid Doliak to swat away annoying, biting insects that plague them in the hot sun. With the extremes of temperatures that come mid nightfall, Doliaks here also need to keep warm. The darker patches on their faces and legs help absorb any warmth left behind in the cooling ground as they lay down to rest. Both desert-dwelling and mountain-dwelling Doliak face the challenges that occur with a low food supply. In the Shiver Peaks, heavy blankets of snow not only obscure food, but also freeze it. And in the desert, relentless wind and sun makes it difficult for vegetation to take on a foothold in the open plains. As well as storing energy and fat reserves, there are several other adaptations that these beasts have to assist them in finding nourishment. Doliaks have broad, flat heads that sit low on their bodies, supported by thick, muscular necks. When a Doliak searches for food, it can use its strength to push its head through the snow or sand and unearth buried vegetation. All Doliak have wide, cloven hooves that splay with their weight and stop them from sinking into the sand or snow. These can also be used to dig down in search of roots and tubers. Doliak teeth and mouths are adapted to tough, coarse food. Rows of strong teeth work at grinding tough grasses, twigs and bark. In the wild, Doliak would use their rough tongues to pry lichen and moss from rocks, particularly advantageous in those habitats frozen under snow. Doliaks roam far and wide in the search for food. Sometimes a herd lays claim to a territory protecting their land from other Doliaks and any intruders. Here in the desert highlands, there is respite from the barren sand and rock. Wide expanses of grass and vegetation make it a honeypot for grazing animals. This Doliak herd has staked their claim. Led by this particularly cantankerous male, they do not suffer any intruder to approach. Arid Doliak must find these grasslands a utopia. Most wild Doliaks, no matter where they live, live as part of a herd. It is an effective strategy to protect each other from the dangers of predators. 
Here on the stony slopes of the desert highlands, wolves hunt in large packs and prey on any creature that wanders close. By sticking together in groups, there are many more eyes and ears ready to alert each other of any danger. When early warning fails, doliaks can use their strength to fight attackers. Their thick skulls support large curving horns that they can use to gore enemies. When it's time to breed, pregnant female doliak might split off from their herds to find somewhere more sheltered to raise their young. Doliaks bear one to three young that they keep with them until fully grown. These calves are on their feet ready to follow their mothers within a few hours of birth. They are just like miniature versions of their parents, only lacking the impressive size, woolly coats and horns of their mothers. It is imperative that Doliak young are born ready to take on the world. It is too dangerous for young to be left unattended where so many predators track and follow the herds. Equally, Doliak parents cannot afford to stay sedentary in one place to wait for their offspring to gain enough strength. Doliaks must always be moving, roaming in search of vegetation, and their babies must keep up. Luckily, their calves come equipped with the softest, densest wool that can compensate for their lack of fat reserves. They will soon grow, as they are fed on the fatty, nutrient-rich milk of their mothers. Doliaks have always been revered, either as an integral part of survival or for more spiritual reasons. According to Norn history, the Doliak was once represented in the pantheon of the spirits of the wild. When Yormag attacked, Doliak was one of the spirits who remained in the north to battle the dragon. This action was instrumental in giving the Norn the time they needed to flee south, away from the dragon's corruption. Several shrines to Doliak still stand across Tyria, some bearing a familiar visage and others portraying an ox, by which the great spirit was also known. Even the more mundane Doliaks we see across Tyria have an uncanny connection to the history of their kind. Here in Harathi hinterlands is a lone Doliak. Walking slowly, they make their way towards a place of ancient power in a peaceful dell. The bodies of sick, injured and elderly Doliaks rest here, and the floor is white with their bones. It is a Doliak graveyard, where the Doliaks from nearby wild herds come to die. Doliaks have an uncanny instinct when it comes to their deaths and have been known to trek for miles to this place. Here the deceased Doliak leave their bodies and walk in spirit form to their final resting place. This cave used to be a hideout for bandits, but it is now haunted by their ghosts. According to locals, the bandits did not respect the hallowed ground of the cave and surrounding area. Their abandoned belongings and scattered writings imply their fate was at the hand of these very Doliak spirits that walk these paths. Now the bandits cower in fear each time a spirit approaches. Quite what happens to these spirits when they reach the cave is a mystery. They appear to vanish once they reach the water. But every Doliak that dies here follows the same path. Apart from revering Doliak, many cultures rely on Doliaks for food, shelter and clothing. In places where extensive farmland is not an option, settlements favour livestock to support their families and they need their animals to be just as dependable as they are. Doliak wool possesses superior warmth and softness. The longer guard hairs that form the outer layer of their coats are also particularly strong. As well as using the wool to spin yarn and weave fabric, the fibre can be woven into ropes and makes excellent, flexible, strong tents and awning. Doliaks can also carry great weights for long distances without getting tired. As such, they are favoured as beast of burden for merchants. No one traversed the perilous mountain passes with their doliaks in tow, and caravans of traders crisscross the sand dunes, moving from outpost to outpost. Trade is the lifeblood of the desert, especially one so torn by conflict. Without it, these small settlements would cease to exist, and any relief efforts in the wake of Balthazar's campaign would be overcome by the desert. Doliak are so dependable that they have been employed across Tyria in the efforts of war. Their great strength makes them perfect for transporting heavy equipment and supplies. Their ineffable personalities mean they are not phased by strange noises or smells, and, with some training, they are not spooked by explosions. When the pact moved to quash Zaitan, Doliak stood right beside the soldiers. When they entered the jungle to eradicate Mordremoth, Doliaks were on the front lines. No matter the harsh environment or the trials before them, 
Doliax managed to carry on with the same determination, as faithful companions accompanying travellers to steadfast reinforcements on the front lines. Doliaks are part of the history of many communities. Even as change comes to so many places, Doliaks will no doubt maintain their special place and significance on Syria. <laughs>